Regardless of whether you design your own models to be 3D printed or you print out one of the thousands or millions of 3D models that already exist online, sooner or later you're going to be needing to use supports. And on FDM or extrusion-based 3D printing, with the exception of multi-material or dual extrusion 3D printers, the support material or that scaffolding is going to be the exact same material as your primary model. Supports are a very important part of 3D printing and something that you're going to want to get familiar with. With dialed in support settings for your specific machine and the material that you're using, they can be the difference between a print that looks great and a print that just looks okay. And in more extreme situations, especially if it's a functional part and needing a lot of supports, it can be the difference between a print that is successful and a print that completely fails. Now, supports have gotten really good over the years and the auto-generated supports based off the given parameters are going to be more than enough for most situations. However, they're not perfect. Back in 2020, we covered what the manual or custom support generation looks like in Kira, which basically is just placing a bunch of blocks around that can either be support enforcers or support blockers, depending on what you want. And in that video, I showed a model with the auto-generated supports versus the manual ones that I placed, and it required a lot less material and it was easier for me to remove. So today we're gonna to take a look at Prusa Slicer and their custom supports, which is their paint on supports. This past year, I've been using Prusa Slicer quite a bit more with the primary reason initially being that Prusa Slicer just runs a lot better on my M1 based Mac. And I've sort of fallen in love with their take on the custom supports because they are really easy to use and incredibly effective. Today we're going to take a look at how the custom paint on supports work, how the different tools and settings can be customized based on what you're trying to do, and of course how to use them. I'm really excited to show you guys this one because I've been using them quite a bit lately. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Now in Prusa Slicer, you're gonna to need to make sure you're either under the advanced or expert tab. Uh, that way you have access to the paint on supports. You don't necessarily have to be on the latest Prusa 2.4. However, they did introduce a new support style called Snug, which will save you some material because the supports generated will be closer to your model. Um, and they're pretty cool to play around with. So if you see here, left is Snug and right is the standard grid supports that the other versions of Prusa Slicer would have generated. So once you have your model imported, you'll need to select your model. And then on the left-hand side in the toolbar, there's a little sort of paintbrush icon. Clicking on that will take you into the paint on support mode. And in its most basic sense, the way it works is when you mouse over your model, you'll see a little round gray area, which is representing where the brush is or where your cursor is. And when you left click, you'll start to apply this blue paint. And these are all the areas that you are going to be having supports. And so I just, for example, go around to the different areas that I can easily see will need supports. And when you go over to the right toolbar where it says supports, you change it from everywhere to for support enforcers only. And by doing that, when I go ahead and select slice up the model, it will generate supports on just those areas that I applied that blue paint to. Another thing that's really cool is these support blockers that work the exact same way. So if I change back to supports everywhere and instead of left clicking, I right click, the paint that's going to be applied is red and it works the opposite. So instead of it putting supports in the areas that I want it to, it will now generate the supports like it normally would, except for in the area I said, hey, don't put any supports here. If you want to remove a selection in the bottom left of the toolbar, there is a remove all selection button that will completely get rid of any paint strokes that you have on there. Alternatively, if there's just a certain section you want to get rid of, you can hold down the shift button on your keyboard and when you left click, it will turn into an eraser tool. There is a slider called the highlight overhang by angle, which will allow you to adjust the angle from zero to 90 degrees. And I see that having two purposes. It's going to apply a light blue shadow. So it's not actually applying supports in those areas. And you could either use that as a reference for where you are then going in and painting, or if you hit the enforce button beneath it, it will actually apply paint to those light blue highlighted areas, turning them to dark blue. And then as I slice here, you can see that it does have supports in all those areas. And if you want some more control, you can start with that and then either add to it. Or if you hold down the, again, the shift button on your keyboard, you can subtract some of those blue highlights if you feel like it's just applying too much. So far we've been using the brush tool under the tool type. There is also the smart fill and they are very different to each other. The brush tool, as you saw, is quite literally clicking and painting on the model, while the smart fill is much more like the paint bucket if you've used Photoshop or any sort of 
graphic editing or graphic design software where you click on a section and it completely paints that entire area. You do have the ability to adjust the smart fill angle, which will make it where you can uh, quickly paint a large section or quickly paint a smaller section, depending on how much control you'd like to have. Personally, I don't really use this very much at all for paint on supports. Um, they have this exact same thing for the uh, turning a model into a multi-material model, which I think it's very useful, but I find the brush tool to be much more useful than the smart fill uh, when it comes to generating these custom supports. There is a on overhangs only checkbox under tool type. And what that'll do is if you have the highlight overhang by angle on anything other than zero degrees, I found out quickly that on zero degrees, it just does not work and it treats it as if it wasn't checked. But if you have that set to anything at all, so that way there's that light blue shadow, it will only let you paint within those areas that are within that certain parameter as far as the degree of overhang. So if you want to make sure that you're not applying supports on areas that don't need it, you can sort of use that to give yourself a bit of a stencil on the areas that you uh, will actually be allowed to paint those custom supports. There's a couple options under the brush shape. So far we've been using the sphere and there's also the circle next to it. And those two are gonna be really, really similar. The main difference is that the sphere, when you're painting, anything that's within that brush circle is going to be painted, even if it's not directly in the camera's view, it can kind of wrap. While on the circle, it's only going to paint what's within that circle that is in the camera view facing you. So on the ears here, I show on the left side, me using the sphere. On the right side, I'm using the circle. And when I turn this model around, the side with the circle sort of cuts off roughly and the sphere goes a little bit further. So I, I find myself using the sphere more often than the circle. It's really up to you. But again, showing here with the legs using the sphere on the left side and the circle on the right and turning it around, the difference is not substantial. So it really just depends on what it is that you're wanting to accomplish. And if that is not enough control, you have the triangles brush shape, which will allow you to select every single polygon you can click or click and drag. Personally, I never use this because it's way too, uh, way too much. But if this is something you need, you can have that level of control. There is a split triangles checkbox and all that'll do is, is when you're painting, this is with the split triangles. If you see the edges, they're much smoother. It's cutting the polygons in half compared to that right side there where they are larger. So again, just something you can change if you want to. I usually just leave it by default, but if you want that level of control, you can. As far as adjusting the sizes of the paintbrush, you can either use the slider or hold down the alt key on your keyboard and use the scroll wheel on your mouse to go from as small as you can possibly get it to a massive paintbrush. The last tool that you have is the clipping of view, which does just that. It clips the model for you. And so depending on the angle that you have the model, that is the angle it will start clipping from. And this will simply allow you to access certain areas that might be difficult to access in the model because you can remove all of the things sort of blocking your field of view. And if you want to then look at it from a different angle, you can just go ahead and click the reset direction and it will change the direction that it clips with. So not something I've used, but if there's like an internal pocket or cavity that you just can't reach in the model, this will allow you to sort of chop up or clip the model to make sure that you are able to access and either add supports or block supports from those certain areas. All right, now for a quick demo of one way I would use it. So this is the ModBot robot. I sliced it as Prusa Slicer would slice it, which is with supports everywhere. Now, the way I'm going to do it is by adding support blockers, creating an X shape underneath his neck with basically what this is doing is creating four three millimeter gaps that the printer should have no problem bridging, but it's going to make it much easier for me to get something like a spatula or some flush cutters in there to actually clip and remove the supports without damaging the model. So this is just a scenario where using actually support blockers instead of the enforcers is something that can be very useful. I went ahead and printed this model out on the Focus Odin, which we did a live stream unboxing and setup of on the ModBot Army channel, which I can link you guys to in Proto Pastas. It was their metallic green HTPLA. And as you can see here, it's got the gap, which if I had not done this, which I did print this prior without having these gaps, it was very difficult to remove the supports. But having it like this, I was able to just get the spatula into all the different corners and just have them pop off, which left me with a really, really good looking print. And on the neck, you can't even tell that there was any bridging that had to be done 
because of how insignificant it was. And that has been Paint on Supports in Prusa Slicer. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you have a better understanding of how to use the Paint on Supports. I did want to reiterate that this is not something that you have to use all the time or that you even should use all the time. I probably still use the auto-generated supports nine out of 10 times at least, but it is really nice knowing that if for some reason the slicer is just not outputting what you want or you just want to have a bit more control on where you're placing supports or where you're blocking supports that you can definitely do so. Let me know what your thoughts are down below if this is something you've used before or if you end up giving it a go for the first time, how it works out for you. I always love hearing feedback and if there's anything that was unclear Clear, please let me know as well and I will do my absolute best to answer. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!